Let's talk about how to find the maximum curvature of a function, and let's do it with y is equal to e to the x. And let me give you guys a picture right here first. Let's say this is how e to the x looks like. And remember, there's a difference between slope versus curvature. Let's say right here. If I want to talk about the curvature, you can see that the curve right here is not really bending. So right here, we are going to expect to have small curvature kappa. And in fact, right here, the curve is not really bending either. This right here, you can also expect that you have small kappa. But now if you're talking about the slope, the slope right here is because the curve is flat, so the slope is close to zero. But the slope right here is big because it goes up really like, crazy, right? So we're talking about the kappa, the curvature. Where is this curve bending the most? It's not at zero. This question is not like, a, well, you do all the work and then at the end, the answer is zero. No, it's not like that. It might look like it, it's like bending quite well, but don't trust my picture. We have to trust the calculus. I would like to tell you, it's actually somewhere here, a little bit to the left of zero, somewhere here. How do I know? Because I did the problem already. Now, do the math. Here, kappa. We are given y is equal to f of x. So just use the formula that we did before. We need a second derivative of the function. Take the absolute value, divide, 1 plus the first derivative of the function, square that, and then raise that to the 3 half power. I chose e to the x is because the derivative e to the x is just always e to the x, no matter how many times you do it. So this is e to the x with the absolute value over 1 plus e to the x squared, and then raise that to the 3 half power. Because e to the x is always above the x-axis, so we don't need the absolute value. And then multiply the exponents, we get e to the 2x here, and then raise that to the 3 half power. So now we have a formula to help us find the curvature of this curve at any x value. If you want to say the curvature at 0, at x equals 0, just plug in 0 into the x. So we get e to the 0 over 1 plus e to the 2 times 0, and then raised to the 3 half power, which is we get 1 over, that's 1, that's 1, which is 2, and then we have 3 over 2. And the over 2 is like the same as the square root. So you can write it as 1 over square root of, well, 2 raised to the third power, you can put it as 8. Let's not simplify this. But the curvature at 0 is this. It's also quite small. Also, imagine you are going to the left, right? x is approaching negative infinity. The top right here will be approaching 0. That's why we said we will have small curvature right here. Also, if x is toward the right, going to past infinity, when x is approaching infinity, the bottom here is much bigger because Oh yeah, because if you just ignore the 1, you multiply the powers, this is e to the 3x. So the bottom is indeed much bigger. So in the end, you have infinity on the bottom, downwards to the top, so the curvature will also be small, approaching 0 as well. Okay, now, how do we find the maximum curvature though? We have a expression for the curvature. How do we find the maximum? Yes, Cal 1 stuff, right? We have to take the derivative of this and then set equal to 0, find the critical number, and make sure that we get a maximum. <laughs> so how do we do it? Of course, we can just start with this and do the quotient rule. And um, I don't know if you guys like the quotient rule or not, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this up to the numerator. Have a look. This e to the x is still e to the x. But this 
becomes 1 plus e to the 2x raised to the negative 3 over 2 power. Then I want to multiply this inside. To do so, I just have to make sure this is also raised to the same power like that. Then we can multiply the insides together. And to make that happen, let's see how can we make that happen. I just want to put down negative 3 over 2 because that's my goal and then 1 plus e to the 2x, negative 3 over 2. The base is still e, no worries on that. I still need the x for the exponent, good. Now, what times negative 3 over 2 will give us negative 3 over 2? Sorry, what times negative 3 over 2 will give us x? <laughs> the reciprocal, yes, is negative 2 over 3. Again, if you take this times that, negative, negative, cancel, 2, 2, cancel, 3, 3, cancel, very nice. Then, I'm going to multiply this inside. Yeah, because they all have the same power. So we can see our expression becomes e to the negative 2 over 3x. And then plus, multiply this and that, we just have to add the exponents. So let's see negative 2 over 3x plus 2x. Get a common denominator, which this becomes 6. So we need positive 4 over 3. 4 over 3. x and then raise that to the negative 3 of 2 power so remember this is still the k now it's about time for us to take the derivative so i will just put down k prime look at this and take the derivative put the power to the front so we will have negative 3 over 2 and then this inside e to the negative 2 over 3x plus e to the 4 over 3 x minus 1 to the power Right? So minus 2 over 2, that's minus 5 over 2. You might think that this is still complicated. Why did I do all that? Now, the key is, in fact, we just have to worry about the derivative inside. The derivative inside, use the chain rule here. Don't forget about that. We get negative 2 over 3, e to the negative 2 over 3x, and then plus 4 over 3, e to the 4 over 3x. So now, when we are trying to find the critical number, we will have to consider k prime to be 0. And the truth is, this right here cannot be 0. You're adding something that cannot be 0 either. This whole part cannot be 0. The only choice is this right here. This is our only hope because we have a negative right here. right? Negative with some positive. This is our only hope. So we just have to look at negative 2 over 3 e to the negative 2 over 3x plus 4 over 3 e to the 4 over 3x equal to 0. And now to solve this equation, I would like to move this to the other side. So we have 4 over 3 e to the 4 over 3x equals positive 2 over 3 e to the negative 2 over 3x. And now to simplify this a little bit, I'm going to multiply all this by, I need a 3 on the top, and then let's also divide out by 2, right? So 3 over 2. In the meantime, let's also multiply by e to the positive 2 over 3x, so that this will be 1. So now if we multiply this, this times that 3 cancels, we have 2, and then e, we are going to add the exponents. 4 over 3x plus 2 over 3 is 6 over 3, which is 2x. And now it's equal to this times that. They all cancel, which is just 1. Now, to solve this equation, first we have to get rid of the 2, right? So we will have 1 half. And then to get rid of the e, we take the natural log. And then lastly, we have to get rid of this 2. So divide it by 2 again. So x is equal to that. And in fact, we can clean this up a little bit. This is indeed a negative number because we can look at this as 1 half ln of 2 to the negative 1, and then we can put a negative to the front. So negative 1 half ln 2. And in fact, this is the only critical number that actually gives us the max as well. 
And technically, you should also do a first derivative test. So I'll just show you what to do. K prime, so you are going to look at our K prime expression. And if you plug in negative one half ln two, you get zero. And let me tell you, if you pick a number smaller than this, let's say negative like 50 or negative 100 or so, plug in, just trust me, you will get a positive result. And then if you get a number bigger than this, and plugging, you get negative. One easy way to do is, let's consider limit negative infinity. If you have negative infinity, all right, this is always positive, no worries on that. So we have negative right in the front, okay? And then when x is going to negative infinity, this is going to be dominating, right? Because negative negative becomes positive, so this is negative. That's going to take over that, so it's negative times negative, which is positive. And for this, you can take x to be positive infinity. In that case, this will dominate that. So we get positive, positive, negative. Yeah, so just like that. So we have a max happens here. So finally, I will show you guys what the maximum curvature is. I just had to plug in this into our k expression, right? So here is the maximum curvature, and we will just have the value at negative one half ln two. I will plug into here, so we get e to the negative one half ln two over one plus e to the two times negative one half ln two, and then raise the denominator to this three half power. And now it's all about simplifying this. So right here on the top, we can put this to here. So that's ln 2 to the negative 1 half power. And then we have the base e, right? They cancel. So the top is really just 2 to the negative 1 half. And then for the bottom, this and that cancel. So we have, we have e to the negative ln 2. And then we can put the negative to here. So that's 2 to negative 1. And then they cancel. So we get 2 to negative 1 which is one half. So over one plus one half, and then raised to the three half power. And right here, I will put this on the bottom. So we will get one over two to the one half power. And this is three half. I will take this three, raised to the three half power on the top right here first, and then over two to the three half power so that I can put this up here. So we get, this is two to the three half over, and uh, they both have the one half power. I'm going to do this. This is square root of seven. No, square root of two, why am I square seven? And then this right here is square root of 27. Yeah. And then the top is square root of eight. And then they cancel this and that, so it's a uh, square root of four. So it's just a two. So we get two over square root of 27, which is nine times three. So, wow, two over three, square root of three. Woo. The algebra, man. Anyway, that's it.